What's up guys, Nolan here, gonna be talking about Broken Arrow, which we haven't in a little while, but I will let you guys know that I have a ton of footage still left over. Actually, I don't know if, I don't know if ton is the right word, I definitely have several games that I think you guys would be interested in watching, but my overall vibe with it was I didn't know if you guys would necessarily be interested in watching gameplay when you can't play yourselves. So, give me your take on that. If I have some games that um, I haven't shown you yet, would you like to see them? And on top of that, if there is some topics that you want me to cover, if there's some main questions that you guys think I should cover, let me know. And um, when I find the time, I'll try and cover them. But we do have an interesting topic today, which is a Q&A. So, Felix and a few of the mods over on the Broken Arrow Discord did a Q&A for about, uh, I would say, like an hour and a half, maybe two hours today. I forget exactly the time on there. And uh, this was from the people that were like top ranked or whatever uh, for uh, just like, what was it? Like kills and like win loss and stuff like that from the open beta. Now, a little bit of a, a tidbit thing here is I've, I've been talking to the devs for a little while myself. So I have to be careful exactly where I get some of this information from and what I, who I talk to and stuff like that. But anything that I put up in a video is relatively useful information. It should be, there's some of it's, and I try to be as clear as possible. It's some of it is unofficial, some of it's uh, official, things like that. So when it comes to stuff like this, this is completely official. So this is directly from Felix. And if I have something else to add, then I'll add it as a bit of a like a speculation or something that I've heard or something that I've understood in the past and things like that. But this Q&A, this information that you're about to get is directly from Felix and is okay to share with everybody. So this is, I guess what you would say, the most up-to-date official information that we can possibly get about the game. And uh, so just, you know, this is, this is what we're working with right now. So with that being said, uh, We'll go down the questions. There was kind of, we went back and forth a bit. There was a bunch of people asking questions, um, some stuff we've covered in the past. So this was not absolutely every single question that has been brought up before. If you guys have watched my other videos in terms of the future of, of uh, Broken Arrow and whatnot, um, if you guys like actually get that information plus watch what we have today, you'll be as up to date as possible. Uh, because whenever there was a question asked that was obvious or something that we've already talked about before, I kind of tuned out because I was talking to mods, I was talking to some other buddies in chat. and So yeah, there would be some topics or that somebody would ask a question that we we would have the answer to or we would fully understand. Or Some of this was kind of like opinionated, um, which we'll get to at the end as well. Um, there's a couple of topics that I want to get to uh, that the, uh, people in chat were asking me about or... Um, some people would ask Felix and then he would respond the same way that I would respond basically because I, I think we, we see a like on a lot of these topics. So we'll get to those extra stuff at the end. But just again, might have missed one or two things. Um, it was a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of discussion. So might have missed some things, but I got some very important stuff here. So let's get to it. Modding in general. Uh, Felix said that you're going to be able to import your own 3D models and more. They are definitely open to it, but not sure when and how. Just want to make sure that they prevent people from opening the DLCs without purchasing. So to add a bit to that, I think what they're talking about specifically here, or what Felix was talking about specifically, was they fully intend to add more nations and, you know, specializations to those nations in the future. So even though they're open to open to mod support, they are almost certainly going to add, let's say, Germany, because we've actually already seen Leopard 2A7s or 6s or whatever those were in the engine, uh, as well as just Germany being a very powerful European nation militarily, almost certainly going to add Germany. So what they wouldn't want is with a paid DLC coming in the future with Germany, they wouldn't want somebody to mod in Germany, for instance. Um, so... It kind of limits to them in that respect, so I'm, I'm not sure exactly where people would take the modding and whatnot, but they're very open to it, so we'll see. We'll see. And, and then when we take into account the, the, the farther reaching nations, like maybe Israel, uh, I don't see realistically Israel ever fighting in Eastern Europe, really, unless something completely insane is going on. So something like that. Like, I don't see them necessarily adding... It, 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 actually, I'll put it this way. It's definitely not their priority to add Israel to this game. So maybe that was 
be something that that would they would be cool with somebody you know modding into the game adding um, Israeli units with the Merkavas and the uh, the namers and uh, with their more unique AA and drones and stuff like that um, potentially things like or potentially nations like Turkey stuff like that so we'll see how that works into things but Felix did say that they would allow us to import our own 3d models and more and that they're open to it so we'll see what happens with that on that end of things uh, pretty important thing here they have made the release date just 2024 in general. So some people may remember, depending on how long you've been following this game, it was Q1, Q1 2024. And uh, in fact, I think it was 2023 at one point, actually. Now that uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I think it was 2023 at some point there. But they're running into some issues. They want to make sure everything's running well. They want to make sure everything's good. And um, as we saw with the open beta, it's quite popular. So I think what they're really focusing right now on is trying to avoid the problems that popped up with the open beta because surely if they release and it's as popular as it was with the open beta they're gonna have some issues there are a lot of problems people getting into games and stability issues and stuff like that so hopefully they're working on that i would assume they are and they're working on some stability things they're working on um maybe some balance things here and there they're just they're just not done they're not quite ready yet so they've made it 2024 in general um no longer i i don't think it would be proper to really assume that this game is going to be soon i would just say 21 as, as as sad as that makes me because i just adore this game i think about it constantly we talk about it constantly uh i i am so ready to play this and if i was able to play it i'd be playing it every day truly uh but we're gonna have to wait a bit longer uh in order to get at least to multiplayer because felix did say a single player beta was coming so at least we'll get a bit of a taste um Hopefully it's not the same demo that we've played a bunch of times already. Uh, hopefully there's some interesting stuff going on. Maybe some new scenarios, maybe a scenario editor. Who knows? The only thing that we heard was that a single player beta, another beta is coming. Uh, on the end of, or on the side of, uh, of the, the single player side of things, they did say that uh, custom games we're going to be one to one to five to five and that also uh actually that has nothing to do what was i going to go there oh the scenario editor uh, the, in terms of single player stuff the scenario editor is confirmed the map editor is not so they will give us maps and then we can decide how that works well, we can decide like where the points are where the spawns are and whatnot we can we can mess with the scenarios and I would assume add in things like how the AI spawn, what the AI is and stuff like that. Things like the demo mission that we've already played. I'm assuming that that would be the scenario so that we would be able to edit those. They give us the maps. We decide what happens on those maps and then we mess around with uh, AI and whatnot. But the map editor is not confirmed yet. So we're not going to be able to choose to play in Moscow, to play in what would, be the, uh, uh, what would it be? Um, well, Kiev, <laughs> something like that. I don't exactly know how uh, specific they'll get with, uh, with, the, with, with the war that's going on right now. And I know that they've moved past. They're trying to move away from some of the more real, real stuff that's going on. Because it's not, um, what would the word be? Not really proper to make a game out of a real war that's happening right now. Uh, even though that this is kind of what we're here to do. We're here to mimic wars this is a real-time strategy game where it's this is a war game really even though without the title there uh so i think they're trying to move away from the actual the real conflict stuff that's going on so yeah uh i know we're doing a lot of the baltics and we're doing a lot of uh up in the northern seas and stuff like that but anyway we're not going to be able to choose the location they give us the locations and then we can edit what happens on them with the scenario editor there. um going back to what i was talking about before we there's a lot of multiplayer stuff we talked a lot about multiplayer stuff uh, they said they were going to do the Glico 2 ranking system. So whatever that is, uh, I personally don't understand that stuff. Uh, he mentioned that if you win, depending on who you win against, um, you might win in small chunks. But if you lose, depending on who you lose against, you could lose in big chunks as well. So whatever the Glico 2 ranking system, those of you guys that take this stuff seriously, you'll understand it. Uh, if you want to take that stuff seriously, go ahead and go look into that. I don't understand it. I'm on a tight schedule here. I'm not going to look into it, and it's not something that I'm necessarily interested in. Uh, if I go and do something competitive, I'll try to win. And if I lose, then I lose. That's pretty much all I take it. And then we'll see how the ranking goes after that. Um, custom games, you can do 1v1 up to 5v5, but there's not going to be any real progression to that or like a ranking system to that. It's just an open, like a skirmish mode, uh, PvP mode, if you want to set that up. But 
luckily it's not going to be like war game where uh you can just kind of set it up in, in in general you don't have to go looking for somebody you can just kind of have it set up and you're good to go um they're not going to add voip but they are going to improve the communication systems and the pinging systems between teammates in game however uh and they're also on top of that the main question that i wanted to ask was what happens when you lose teammates like how does that end up working out so they're going to try to maintain the money per team if people leave so they're going to increase the speed at which dead units come back and the speed at which you earn your points so that that is the handicap to if you lose a teammate so if you end up losing teammates you will earn your points quicker and the units that you do lose will respawn quicker that's very good but at the same time i i i, I obviously still see it being a problem because the speed at which your units are coming in right so if you are a mainly ground force and you end up losing a teammate that was air for whatever reason your units even though they're coming back quicker and you're getting them quicker because you're you're able to buy them quicker because you're getting the points quicker they're not going to get to those points quicker so there's still some issues that are going to pop up i still foresee that being a problem and i don't really see a solution personally if you guys have any ideas of what might be a solution to that please let me know uh, and if it seems like it's uh, if it's reasonable, I'll uh, I'll push it to the devs uh, because that is a problem, and it was a problem significantly, you know, with the open beta. That you know, you had teammates leave, leaving, you're basically screwed. But at least now, you will get points quicker, and you will get your units that die quicker because that wasn't happening before. And then also, we get to communicate a bit easier with our teammates with the different ping and the chat systems and stuff like that. So that's coming. Uh, but no boy, they're not going to do boy. Uh, there's going to be five specializations each for U.S. and Russia. No other nations at release. They're still hesitating and deciding on what specifically will be those specifications or those specialties for the U.S. and Russia. But it is going to be U.S. and Russia. Five specs each. They don't exactly know what will be what yet. So if you guys caught my previous videos where we, we went and looked at the icons from what we could see so far... We made educated guesses based off of what the devs have already told us and what we've already seen. Those things might change. If I had to guess, and this is kind of obvious too, we're probably going to keep an armored, an airborne, a marine, and a mechanized deck for each. We'll see what the others are. I don't think there's going to be too much shake of that oh, also you know support it's probably going to be support too but you could add support to things like armored quite easily or mechanized quite easily um would definitely work with armored so we'll see we'll see what the other ideas that they have and we'll see if they do anything super special with uh, either of the nations but five specs each us and russia probably going to be an armored probably going to be a mechanized probably going to be a marine we'll see what the other two end up being for each that's my guess um and in fact it's uh, uh Felix already said that some have already been removed and some added. So we'll see what that ends up being. Uh, scenario editors confirmed. The map editor is not. Already covered that. Uh, infantry. Infantry was a topic. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that after we're done with this. Uh, they said ATGM units have been given anti-infantry rounds. So just like tanks or just like vehicles, ATGM units will have their... Um, their anti-personnel rounds along with their anti-vehicle or anti-tank rounds as well. So there would be a bit of a mixed bag there being able to engage um, infantry units just as well as they could engage vehicles before. So that will be good. Uh, they also increased infantry health. Uh, they understand that infantry is still in a rough spot. And then that kind of cued a conversation where they mentioned, um, or, or one of the people that were questioning mentioned, are they going to make infantry better so that they can't get rolled over by tanks? And I got to agree with, with Felix on this one. Some of you guys are really going to disagree, but I am definitely in the mechanized boat. I love my tanks. I love my vehicles. And Felix did mention that, no, they're not going to make it that way because they should. That's the way basically things should work. So vehicles, and if you do an armored, like a heavy armored push, it's a heavy armored push. If you do it correctly, it should roll. It should roll lines. And people were mentioning, you know, the way that ATGM, how effective ATGM should be and how effective infantry in, in urban urban places, urban, you know, environments and, and tree lines and stuff like that should be. And that's still the case. That was still the case with the previous beta. It's just that 
if the person that is rolling through with mechanized units or armored units plays it correctly, that shouldn't play that big of a part. You can kind of, you can choose where you want to hit. You can choose where you want to run. You can choose how to smoke. You can choose how to hit this, how to hit things with artillery. I think the main problem was is that that is combat these days when you don't take air into account. If you're able to do this intelligently, you get recon out, and I've made several videos talking about this. You get recon out, you probe, you figure out where the infantry are, and because they're not as mobile as tanks, and if they don't move out of the way, you hit it with artillery, you hit it with bombs, you overwhelm it with ground units that use smoke, that coordinate correctly. That's what is supposed to happen. That is the whole point of mechanized warfare. You have something with more armor and bigger guns, you're going to flatten them, especially if it's being supported correctly. You're going to be able to get through. That doesn't mean the infantry player can't bring up more infantry, which is what I've been asking for, is cheaper infantry. Uh, but it looks like the route that they're going right now is that uh, infantry in general have more hit points. Felix also mentioned that they're going to increase the unit sizes, which was definitely a thing. There was few units. It, it's Infantry in general, just it's just it just wasn't cutting it. I, I didn't see a reason to really bring infantry in any capacity over the points that would be a vehicle where you could smoke, you could move quicker, you could resupply it quicker, you can get it back into the fight quicker, and most of the time it just hit harder and at longer ranges. It seems for the most part that's going to stay true. Now, if there is going to be an objective on a urban location, infantry still will, like it did in the beta, hold that area more effectively. Because of the cover involved, you can move from building to building. It just depends on how much you let an enemy unit, because these these tanks and these mechanized units are going to be more expensive, how much are you going to let them build up their points to get those tanks? And how much are you going to allow them to keep those tanks alive? Anytime that I did badly in a game, it's because the other team coordinated correctly so that the probes that I did make did not survive. That's points that I'm missing. That's going to be another couple of minutes for me to get another unit, even if I did add the points back up to the front line. You need to try and take advantage. When somebody shows you your hand, you need to take try and take advantage, take the initiative, and eliminate those units. We'll see how the meta and we'll see how the balance goes past that. But overall, generally speaking, it seems like other than the ATGM units being able to engage infantry and infantry units gaining a couple of extra heads as well as gained ex uh, some extra health points, things will generally stay the same. Where if you are... Holding something with infantry, somebody is pushing you with tanks, and the tanks are properly supported, the tanks should win because that is how that should play out. That is, they they should go through that. Especially if they're using artillery, especially if they're playing air, it's just a bit of rock, paper, scissors. You got it, you know, you got uh you got your paper with infantry, the rock is the tanks. The the rock is tanks, the rock is mechanized. And then you got scissors, which is your air support and your artillery and things like that. It's always going to be a thing. It's something you got to look out for. Same, just as the see the infantry versus tanks argument and whether or not those should be good against each other, whether tanks should roll through and whatnot, is the same thing as like, oh, AA is too good. Which AA definitely was a bit of was a bit of RNG involved with that stuff, but they did want to narrow down RNG on that end of things. It depends on how you play your units. And I do wish that there was more multiplayer play going on so that we could test that stuff properly, to be honest. But uh, it's this is probably going to be an age as old, an argument as old as time here when it comes to this game because uh, there's going to be people that want to use infantry, there's going to be people that want to play planes, there's going to be people that want to do support, and there's going to be people like myself that want to play mechanized. And if it's your thing, you're going to always want it to be good. Uh, but you got to keep balance in mind. You got to keep some things in mind. And realistically speaking, there's going to be a rock, paper, scissors to these things. And infantry being paper, air and uh, artillery being scissors, uh, tanks and, and heavy vehicles being rock. So we'll see how that goes eventually. Um, that was a big topic. They went back and forth quite a bit on that stuff. Um, ooh, big one here. Low flying drones were added. You are going to be able to low fly your drones. Big one there. Uh, but they are not going to include squad level drones. So you're not going to be able to add anything that's going to be able to, like a, like a tiny drone that you would throw by hand or something like that. It's going to be like the Predators and um, maybe Global Hawks and stuff like that. It's going to be the stuff that, you know, they fly in from an air base kind of thing. But luckily now, you can drop them to the ground and, make not, and, and actually make them somewhat useful. We'll see how useful in particular. But low-flying drones are there. Um, 
maintain the money per team if people leave. Oh, already covered that. Yeah, so if your teammate leaves, uh, you're going to be able to uh, get increased uh, income. I already talked about that. And here's a new thing. Well, not and. It's just this is a new topic. Uh, something that they discussed later was the nuke may be in the next beta. However, they did already say single player beta, not multiplayer beta. So for those that don't know, tactical nukes are going to be coming to this game. Lots of different units when it comes to, or lots of different weaponry when it comes to um, ballistic missiles, when it comes to cruise missiles, standoff weapons, all that different stuff. The nuke is coming and seems like it might be in the next beta. We'll see. Uh, they're trying to keep things simple even when the weapon systems are advanced. Oh, okay, so this topic was uh, how intuitive is it going to be to understand how to use these weapon systems and people were already having trouble with what we have in the game so far when it comes to like how to use your weapons especially from air how to use the artillery units stuff like that felix did answer it that way he said they're trying to keep things simple even when the weapon systems are advanced so it's a it's a mix right so you want cool weapons you want cool things to do with your units but at the same time, if nobody knows how to use them, then it's a bit difficult and it's a bit niche. So they're going to try and keep things advanced, but make it as simple as possible to use those weapons. And expect a lot of that in the future from me. If, if there is some more advanced stuff coming, I'll figure out how to use it and I'll teach you guys about it. Um, spectators will be a thing. Replay is work in progress. So actually, in fact, uh, I, I do believe him saying spectators are already a thing. So uh, whatever testing they have going on, apparently spectators are already working. But the replay system is work in progress. The replay system itself might not be in for initial release. And that's interesting that he thinks of it that way. Because even though they made it 2024, if they're thinking of it that way, at least they do still have a release candidate in mind. And that may be only a few sprints away. So even though they made it 2024 and not like Q1 2024 or Q2 2024 or whatever, I think based off of what we saw from the beta and what we heard today, I would still, I would still, you know, oh, what, what's the right word? What's the right verbiage here? I would, uh, I would anticipate it being around summer for now. If you guys want to stay confident, if you want to be confident about this stuff, I, I think it would still be around summer. We'll see what happens. Um, that beta should happen by then at the very least, but... Uh, trust me, I'm just as antsy as you guys are to get into the game. I really wish that I could play this every day. I really wish I had, I could do play it once a week at least, like get us into the game at some point, because that I felt like we had enough. I feel like that last beta was enough to get in there, even though with the problems that it had. Dude, I just I need that game in my life. I really wish I could play uh, more often. Um, it sucks we can't, but uh, hey, it's uh, they want to make sure that. Uh, they released it in as good a state as possible, and it definitely had loads of problems. L loads, lots. Of them. <laughs> we just combined the two there uh, with the last one, so hopefully they can get some stuff fixed uh, with the next thing, and they can release it sometime soon. We'll find out uh, when the time is right. Anyway, uh, I think uh, I think I kind of covered the topics that I wanted to cover with the extracurricular conversations that were going on. There is going to be a rock, paper, scissors to it. Uh, a lot of people disagreed with uh, the balance and how I played ended up echoing throughout the community uh, even the videos that i'm watching from other people playing i could tell like yeah that's that's like not necessarily like my probe i don't want to necessarily put my name to it because it is a very obvious thing that is that is like a basic warfare thing of, of doing the probe get your units up there make sure they stay alive resupply them and you go except in real life it doesn't happen in the matter of minutes it happens in the matter of weeks because you would need to repair you need to get reinforcements up there you need to get reserves up there things like that um, but realistically, that's how, especially, uh, mechanized warfare, that's how it goes. Um, you go, you figure out what's ahead of you, uh, you plan, uh, a, a way, you strategize a way to get rid of whatever is in front of you, and then you push forward. That is going to be the way things work. We'll see how effective it may or may not be. It seems like that's going to be something that kind of sticks. So, if you were somebody that really liked your infantry, and you just just filled up a town with infantry and you didn't like how a couple of armadas or a couple of abrams would come up there they'd, they'd maybe you hit them with an atgm um, maybe you got one if a bunch moved up or something like that and uh your infantry got flattened by bombs or by artillery or by the tanks themselves it's that's that's the reality you gotta bring a mixed force and you gotta know that that's going to happen if you're if you're if nothing's coming at you you need to be pushing forward you need to be probing yourself 
Recon are gonna, or, well, infantry are gonna shine with recon and weapons teams. And if you need to hold against infantry, obviously, the better the infantry, the better you are. The better weapon systems, the, the hardier they are, the better you are, but you, you're better off you are. But you need to work with your teammates. If you're only bringing infantry, you need to work with your teammates. Um, that's going to be a thing. It's, the tic-tac-toe is always going to be a thing. Otherwise, you're all just sitting there in a stalemate and it gets boring. We've seen plenty of that. You guys haven't messed around with the mods. If you guys haven't messed around with war game, war game in general, that's what tons of the games in war game end up being. Modded or not, it's just a stalemate. If you guys are bringing the same stuff, it's just a stalemate. So we'll see what happens on that end of things. Uh, I did put some gameplay up in the background, so let me know what you guys think. Um, do you want to see more gameplay even though you can't play yourselves? Do you want some commentary? Do you want some topics? I know this shit like the back of my hand. So if there is anything that you guys want me to cover, I can talk about it easily until I lose my voice. Let me know what you guys think. Otherwise, you guys know the drill. To support what I do, click all the buttons on the screen. Check out my other channels for other games right here. Follow me on Twitter for the latest on everything that I do, including not just this stuff, but also Escape from Tarkov and Star Citizen. I'm going to be hitting Star Citizen pretty hard, especially where I can't be playing Broken Arrow. Yeah, we're going to be playing Star Citizen. So those channels are right there. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you have a nice day. See you guys.